Hey there, this is Wendy with Love and Stampin'. I'm so excited you're here with me today. We are gonna make a really beautiful card using a handful of different products from the Rabbit Hole Designs. So I have the Pink Winning stamp set, I have the um, Pine Cones and Poinsettias or Poinsettias and Pine Cones stamp set. This stamp set was drawn and designed by my friend Kelly Taylor. She's actually one of our contributors to the Creative Vault. So um, the Creative Vault is a membership site that I have and there are classes, live events, and fun stuff in there every single month. It's $14.95 a month. So if that's something you might be interested in, I will drop a link below this video and you can check it out more. It's really fun and I send prizes every month. I pick a handful of members and send them prizes in the mail. So here I'm using my Cottontail embossing powder tool. This is my favorite embossing powder tool because it's refillable and it just works great. And then I've got my Misty here. I'm inking up in Versamark ink, stamping this big swag piece down that has the poinsettia in the middle of it. And then I'm going to bring in my um, misty grid paper and my gold embossing powder and then I'm going to cover that Versamark ink with embossing powder. So um, a second ago when you saw that I used that embossing powder tool, you do that over the top of your cardstock to prevent little pieces of embossing powder sticking all over your cardstock. You don't want that to happen. So then here I'm just tapping off the excess, giving it a quick look and making sure I've really gotten coverage over all the bits and pieces. And then I'm going to heat set this. So um, all of this will just get put right back into the container and the container then will get um, put away. And a tip I have for you, never heat emboss over the top of your containers because you will end up blowing powder everywhere. So I set that with my heat tool off camera because it took me quite a while to let the heat tool warm up and then heat set such a big image. So I just don't want to take up time in the video doing that. Here I have a piece of gold foil that's cut at four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then I am taking this um, adhesive foam sheets, cutting down strips and pieces adding it to the back and I'm going to pop this gold foil up on the front of this card base. It's a four and a quarter by 11 inch card base in basic black. The cardstock I'm using is from Stampin' Up. The gold embossing powder is also from Stampin' Up. And then I'm just going to remove the um, adhesive back for this and add it to the card base. The reason I'm using so much foam um, adhesive foam over the back of that gold foil is because I have noticed that foil has a tendency to kind of curl up on the edges or kind of dent in because it's such a thick heavy um, cardstock. So that is just a way that I make sure that the integrity of my card really stays in place and looks nice. Then I'm taking this four by five and a quarter piece of embossed cardstock and adding it to the card front. Now really quick I just want to say you could just add a sentiment to this right here and be done. You do not have to do the next steps that I'm going to show you and that I'm going to do because this is stunning. Like seriously, you add a beautiful little embossed sentiment down in the left corner of this card and you've got an absolutely stunning card. Add a few little embellishments, you're good to go. So here I grab my mini Misty. I don't know why, just did. Um, I have three Misties on my desk. Yes, I do. I have this mini one, um, the black one, and then the bigger one that is also bright pink. I love them all, and yes, I actually use them because like right now, I've got my big swag piece over on my other Misty, and I didn't feel like pulling it off of there. So I just grabbed this little mini one to stamp this image. I'm stamping in Hero Arts Intensified Black Ink, and then I am going to color this poinsettia, or poinsettia, depending on how you like to say it, um, with red Copic markers. And I... <laughs> Oh, I'm so bad, you guys. I'm so bad at putting my marker colors 
up so that you can see them. I don't know what's wrong with me and I apologize greatly, but we're going to get into the coloring. So I have R39. I'm going to tell you what I used. I used R39, R37, and R35. And I kind of wish I would have... <sighs> I kind of wish that I would have gone with a, one more color that was deeper for the base, but ultimately I feel like it turned out really beautiful and it was fine. I just kind of wanted a little bit more contrast, but what happens is I get scared. So I get scared that I'm going to mess up the image and that is just from being newer at coloring with um, alcohol markers. So here I do want to point out what I'm doing. So anywhere that two objects meet or one object lays on top of the other, it's going to be darker. So right there uh, on that petal where you saw me just lay down that dark color around that little folded over flap, and you'll see me do it again here, that's because it would be darker in that area because that's the area that the petal is folding over on itself. And so therefore you would have a little bit of a shadow under there. So that's why you see me going up uh, on the edge of some of these and not on the others. I'm also putting some darker um, color in the middle of some of these going all the way up because like if it were to fold in the middle, that it's gonna be a little bit darker in the center. The three markers I chose really don't have a strong enough variance in color for you to really see the differences, <laughs> honestly. That's why I'm saying I wish I kind of would have gone a little bit darker, but it is what it is. You, you know, that's how you learn. You start out by really following the rules and then you learn how to break them. So what that means is I know that these three colors would blend well together because of the numbering system that Copic markers uses. However, somebody who has more experience than I do would know what other marker they could incorporate into this to kind of get the um, balance I'm talking about or the depth that I'm re that I'm referring to. Without, like, they wouldn't have to look at a color chart. They wouldn't. Ha they would understand how to do. It. It's just like cooking. It reminds me of like baking or cooking. It's like when you understand how cooking works, you can do more things, add more ideas, do things differently when you understand like what spices go together and that kind of stuff. It's kind of the same concept. So I'm still in that learning phase. And truthfully, I'll be honest, I think you're always in the learning phase. Like, are we ever really completely done learning? I don't think so. So here I'm going in with that R37 and then I'll do the R35 and I just really think this poinsettia turned out beautiful. And I took my time layering each color on top of each other and then kind of going back into the previous color to make sure everything blended well. And you can see that I'm leaving the little area that is folded over, the petal part that's folded over. You can see that I'm leaving that white. That's because I'm gonna use the lightest color to color it you'll see here in a minute and the reason i'm doing that is because that area would be the lightest there would be a highlight there because it's folded over so the back of the leaf would be lighter facing up to the light if that makes sense so here you can see i'm just going to go over drag this back in and you can really then see the contrast and like where that's folded over there makes more sense because you're adding a light on top of that shadow part that's folded. Um, okay, so as I finish coloring this, I'm gonna also stamp and color leaves, and then we're gonna work on placement of all of these items. I was really going for a elegant Christmas card, and I think I achieved that. Um, I don't know for sure that I would layer this colored piece on top of the black again. It turned out pretty. I'm not unhappy with the card, but that gold embossed poinsettia was so, is so beautiful that I almost felt like I was taking away from it by covering it up with this colorful one, if that makes sense. The other thing is I used the dye to cut this out. 
go if I would have thinking back on it I think if I would have fussy cut this right up to the edge maybe the, the elegance level would have been a little higher um, just because that white edge that is left when you die cut something I think kind of distracted from the beauty of the card and the elegance of it it, it made it a little bit less elegant so that is just always something to think about too when you're making a card like this. Okay, so now I'm gonna just tape this die in place, run this through my die cut machine to get this cut out, and then, and there's my head and my hair. <laughs> I'm trying to get it lined up perfectly. I meant to cut this part out of the video. You see how that happens? And um, we're gonna run that through the machine and then I'm gonna do the leaves. Excuse me, I had a little yawn there. Um, okay, let's get into a little bit of story time because for those of you that are new here, um, first of all, welcome if you're brand new to my channel. Uh, I'm super happy you're here. Secondly, we do this thing called story time where I just kind of tell you about what's going on in my life. So you can think of it as card making vlogging with a V, vlogging. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get into that. I have a list. I have a list of story time things to talk about. So we're gonna just kind of hop around. So first of all, I'm gonna talk about if I sound funny in our videos for the next nine months, there's a reason. Yes, there is. It is because I got Invisalign. Mm -hmm. 42 years old, rocking Invisalign in my mouth. That's always a fun thing. So uh, a while back, I got a really bad sore jaw. And I have had like bite issues from the time I was a kid. And they corrected all of it when I was a kid. But as we age, our teeth move. It's just part of life. And so my top right teeth were starting to like move in and go back to their old ways. And I started kind of like having a sore jaw on one side and it clicks and the whole thing, which actually they say is mostly from stress, FYI. Um, so I do have TMJ and then also um, I have a crossbite, what they call a crossbite. So if you are a orthodontist you know what that means if you're not you don't and um so they're correcting it again luckily I only have to have Invisalign on my top teeth however let me tell you the <laughs> the first two days of having it in my mouth my teeth hurt so bad like I was pushing on my top teeth and I asked my daughter this I said to her why is it that any injury we have on our body we would never apply pressure to like if I cut my hand open, I would not like, of course you apply pressure to stop bleeding. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying like, let's say it's two days after I cut my hand, I wouldn't like take my fingers and like push into the cut to make it feel better. That would hurt horribly. So why is it that if you push on your teeth or you bite hard on your teeth, like bite down, if they're hurting, why does that give you relief? I don't understand. It's a very weird thing. Like I keep wanting to push on my teeth to like release the pressure somehow. I, I don't know, it's very weird. So not only do I have that contraption in my mouth, um, I am finding a whole new like method to eating <laughs> because I cannot eat with it in. And after I eat, I have to brush my teeth. So I am not one of those people that brushes my teeth after every meal. I think that those people are very rare, honestly. I am a morning and night brusher. So when I get up in the morning, I brush. When I go to bed at night, I brush. But in between, I do not brush. However, when you have Invisalign, you have to brush. So I have been brushing my teeth like three or four times a day. And now what's happening is I'm finding that I don't really want to eat because <laughs> I don't want to have to deal with taking the thing out and then the eating process and then the cleaning it all process and the whole thing like, oh, I just don't want to deal with it. So I have nine months of this. Um, but 
That being said, I am super thankful that my husband has good insurance. We It covered half of the cost of this. And um, I am very thankful that I am capable of, get, of doing this, getting my teeth fixed. There's a lot of people that can't afford that or don't have good insurance or are too scared. I mean, that's something else. In fact, it was funny when I was going to get this done, um, really but quick back to the card. You can see here, I ended up die cutting the happy out of foil. This is a die cut from the rabbit hole. I'm using my precision glue press to glue this down and I'm just removing a little bit of um, gunk that was on the tip of this. And then um, what I really wanted to do was I really wanted to gold foil the word happy. And you saw just a minute ago, I showed it to you. It just would not foil. I even reached out to my friend Kelly and asked her, hey, what am I doing wrong with the foiling? Like, it's not a nice cream. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can talk. It's not a nice, clean, crisp image. So she gave me a couple of pointers. I tried those, still didn't work. One of the things she said is that my cardstock might have too much like texture to it. She said that foiling tends to work better on smoother cardstocks. So if you have like a favorite go-to black cardstock that you use for foiling, I would love for you to tell me about it because I clearly need some. The The cardstock I'm using is um, basic black from Stampin' Up and I, it just maybe has too much texture for this technique, for the technique of foiling. So my other alternative was to cut the happy out of gold foil and then add Christmas. And I know that there's a lot of people that don't like the term happy Christmas instead of Merry Christmas. And if you're one of those people, I want to apologize to you. But um, I just really wanted to use that die cut. And I did not have a Merry die cut that I felt like would work here. I needed a big one. So, you know. That's how we ended up with it. Um, I added these little, I don't even know what these are called. They'll be linked. I'll link to all of the products below. So there's a link that says measurements and supplies. If you click on that link, it's going to take you over to my blog. And there you will be able to purchase any of the products that you see today. Okay, uh, we'll have more story time later. But for now, if I sound funny, it's because I got the garb in the mouth and you know, what are you going to do? Got to live the life. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.